understanding the energy of the natural world and cultivating our own human energy is an art that has been passed down from master to student in a lineage that stretches back some 27 centuries. If you want to keep a fire alive, you need to ensure that there are burning embers that will stay alight until dawn. That is the meaning conveyed by this Chinese character. The brush strokes of this character represent the fire itself. These next two characters express the idea of passing the baton. In a relay race, each runner carries the baton and then carefully hands it on to the next teammate. These four characters describe the notion of lineage. It is a living fire. Like the Olympic flame, it is carefully kept alight and then is passed from hand to hand. This is the story of the lineage of the classical art known as the Great Accomplishment. And how it has been passed down to us over the centuries. Based on meticulous observation of nature, the Great Accomplishment begins with a practice known as standing like a tree. It is first referred to by Lao Tzu, the Chinese sage famous for his book, the Tao Te Ching. It is one of the most widely read and influential books in the history of human civilization. Standing alone and unchanging, it says, one can observe every mystery, present at every moment, and ceaselessly continuing. This is the gateway to indescribable miracles. After centuries of secret transmission from master to student, this art was discovered and made public by great grandmaster Wang Shangjai. He traveled throughout China, meeting and studying under the great masters of his day. You who wish to master this art, he wrote, begin by standing still. Breathe deeply, undisturbed, like air among the clouds. Your spirit and your bones are being tempered in this forge. Hold still, unwavering. This wisdom will suffuse your being endlessly. One of his earliest students was a young dentist at the Tendu Railway Hospital. He was to become the world's leading authority on the great accomplishment. Grand Master Yu Yongnian. It was Grand Master Yu who introduced the healing aspects of this art to hospitals throughout China. His books were pioneering works selling hundreds of thousands of copies. Their distinctive drawings and charts made it clear he wanted everyone to benefit from this art. This one included an outline of the history of the art down through the centuries. He was determined to reach out beyond China. This is a French edition of his work. 
In the 1980s, towards the end of China's cultural revolution, Grandmaster Yu was approached by one of Hong Kong's leading martial artists who wanted to learn the mysteries of the great accomplishment. The young man was Master Lam Kam Chuen. He had settled in Britain and had become the first ever instructor of Tai Chi for the Inner London Educational Authority. Now, under the guidance of Grandmaster Yu, he began teaching Qigong, the art of internal strength. He introduced the system known as Jam Jong, standing like a tree. Almost immediately, the idea of exercise with no movement attracted media attention. The Lamb Association was formed and the Lamb Clinic opened. And on the basis of teaching his Western students, Master Lamb published his groundbreaking book, The Way of Energy. It has now been translated into more than a dozen languages. It was launched in London with a mass stand-in in one of the city's largest parks. Grand Master Yu came to Britain to supervise the final work on the book and endorse it. Then came the breakthrough to television with the 10 part Stand Still Be Fit series. With over 50 years' experience of Jan Zhong, Lam Kam Chuen's teacher, Professor Yu, is aware of the mountain of skepticism that surrounds the exercise and its medical benefits. Uh 你不吃药不打针就这么站一站就能治好病as more and more people realized the health benefits of this art, Master Lamb introduced it for senior citizens, calling it Golden Bowl. See how Master Lamb's hands are open and away from his body, holding the large golden ball. This is a moment of stillness. It is filled with great power. While we stand in this position, let's watch these graceful movements of Tai Chi. Please just remain standing still. Your stillness is a powerful exercise in itself.
among Master Lamb's many books was his trilogy on energy, healing, and power. Backed by a new video, The Way of Power. Also training this morning is Lam Tinyu, Master Lam's second son, who is carrying on the art he has learned from his father. Relax the shoulders, Professor Yu tells him, and go lower. It's amazing how even these tiny adjustments of an inch suddenly make the training so much more demanding. It is said that those who have thoroughly accomplished this art can subdue any threat. In the words of the great sage Lao Tzu, those who have tempered themselves are not afraid of encountering a tiger. Professor Yu has prepared three calligraphies that express the essence of this art. Hold the posture. Develop your energy. Follow the Tao. Release all obstacles. On the outside, it appears weak and without purpose. Internally, it is strong and ready to use. With the publication of The Way of Power, Master Lamb asked one of his students, Pauline Harding, to make sculptures of great Grandmaster Wang Shangjai. He presented these in Beijing to Madame Wang and Grandmaster Yu. Great Grandmaster Wang evoked this art in his writings. Inwardly alert, open, calm, outwardly upright, extended, filled with spirit. This is the foundation of stillness. Add the hard and the soft, the powerful and the relaxed, motion and stillness, contraction and extension. In the instant these converge, there is power. More books followed and Master Lamb began teaching in America. Different, isn't it? It's been two and a half years. <laughs> so you can see it. Ah. I can put my hand up. Different? Two people, the energy contact and the arm contact. Chi <coughs> is considered fluid, ever changing. And that's why, and that's why it's hot grass to see ourselves field of energy. Like a tree we stand, firm and silent, still and stationary, but yet dignified. It was here on the west coast of America that Master Lamb created his Qigong Workbook for Anxiety, with a foreword by Grandmaster Yu.
an international delegation of senior students came to Beijing for the unveiling of a memorial to Grand Master Yu. Tributes from around the world were led by the daughter of Grandmaster Yu. <laughs> Her husband, and then the most senior students of Grandmaster Yu. Yu, Master Lam honors his teacher with a final salute. And Tin Hun. Then in order of seniority, the other senior team and Tin Hun. The Lamb family is followed in order of seniority by the other principal students of Grandmaster Yu. Then the members of the Lamb Association pay their tributes on behalf of the many students around the world. Grandmaster Yu's memorial is in the Myriad Buddha Cemetery in the Beijing Hills. It houses monuments to some of China's greatest writers, artists, and masters of the martial arts like Tai Chi and Qi Gong.
Grandmaster Yu's final book is titled Zhang Zhang and the Tao Te Ching. It expresses his profound wish to share this wisdom with the world. Beside the magnificent bronze statue of Grandmaster Yu is a testimony engraved in marble. It pays tribute to him for having inherited the complete martial arts tradition, but for having turned its power from fighting to healing. That is its future. Together, Grandmaster Yu's daughter and Master Lam stand before his memorial. At the foot of the memorial are the names of both Chinese and Western students. It is a fitting tribute to a Grand Master who believed his art was a treasure for all humanity.